Welcome to DMI's state-of-the-art disc manufacturing facility. We're delighted to have the opportunity to show you how DMI quality gets built into every CD and CD-ROM that leaves any DMI plant. Our new plant has been laid out to make maximum use of the floor space so materials and resources are moved as efficiently as possible. That means a tour, however, will see some procedures out of their actual manufacturing order. So to help you appreciate what you'll see here, we've prepared this video to explain a little about DMI's proud history and how compact discs and CD-ROMs are made. Not surprisingly, the two subjects have a lot in common. When the first music compact disc was made in America in 1983, it was made by DMI. Since that time, we've grown to become the largest independent CD manufacturer in the world. Just like the laser light used to make those CDs, DMI has been focusing all its energies to bring the latest disc technologies into service for our customers. In the same year we produced the first compact disc, we designed and built the first production laser beam recorder for mastering. That laser recorder grew out of research begun in Anaheim in 1979. In 1984, we patented the first CD recordable disc and began custom mastering services. By 1986, we'd produced our first CD-ROM, opened our plant in Huntsville, Alabama, and produced our millionth compact disc. Production grew to 100 million discs annually by 1991, the same year we became the largest independent manufacturer of CD-ROMs in the world. We celebrated the opening of our 218,000 square foot facility in Anaheim in 1995. This spectacular growth is a result of our commitment to customer service and a level of quality that enables us to guarantee our disc quality 100%. Part of our remarkable growth, of course, comes from the remarkable qualities of compact disc technology. A CD is a plastic disc with a thin laser-reflecting metallic layer embedded in it. The compact disc is capable of carrying a tremendous amount of information in the form of sound, images, or any combination of the two. A CD begins when a high-quality sound recording is converted to a series of electronic bits, or digitized. This conversion is done by electronic circuits sampling the analog signal over 40,000 times per second. The signal's voltage at each of these samplings is converted to a number. Ultimately, this series of numbers will be played back to a laser that pulses on and off in response to the numbers. The laser creates microscopic pips in a photosensitive layer on the glass plate of what will ultimately become a master disc. These pits are literally tinier than a gnat's eyelash. If a single pit on a CD was blown up to the size of a grain of rice, the CD it would be on would be over a mile and a half across. Over two billion of these pits are laid down in a spiral pattern, starting at the center of the disc and spiraling outward. This pattern of pits and the flat areas in between, called lands, symbolizes the information to be read by the laser in the CD player in much the same way Morse code stands for letters and words. When a compact disc is played back, the low power laser in the CD player moves over the disc shining into the pits. The laser light is reflected back differently by the pits and lands and so precisely duplicates the digital on-off binary coding that was written by the original laser. Since the entire process is frictionless, surface noise is eliminated, and more importantly, digital recording yields a far greater dynamic range than analog signals. Before the CD, 
Since the days of Thomas Edison, sound recording always involved some kind of mechanical friction process that inevitably introduced distortion and surface noise. Sound waves were used to directly actuate some kind of stylus or cutter that engraved a wavy line pattern on the vinyl disc or a wax cylinder. The digital revolution eliminated the distortion that was a byproduct of the mechanical method, offering far more uniform frequency response with a much greater dynamic range. Since CDs are never physically in contact with a playback mechanism, they can last indefinitely if handled with a little care. The ability of digital compact disc recording to hold vast amounts of information makes the medium ideal for a variety of uses beyond audio discs, such as CD-ROM. DMI remains committed to producing quality discs at the forefront of today's digital revolution, including the new video formats. The production process goes like this. The customer supplies the data on any of a variety of sources. We can master from a variety of source material, such as recordable CD, 1630, professional digital audio tape, or an 8mm exabyte. When a customer source material arrives, it's checked in product engineering to confirm that it's compatible with DMI mastering specifications. If there are any variations, this is where they're remedied. Since the pits are so small, even the smallest speck of dust can ruin a disc. So mastering, and indeed most of the procedures done at our facilities, are performed in clean rooms. Everyone working in the clean rooms is required to wear special protective clothing, affectionately called bunny suits. Clean room protocol is so strict it even requires special dust-free paper and pens. The master begins with a piece of optically flat glass. The glass disc is much larger than the final CD will be to assure that the surface is perfect all the way to the edges of the disc. The glass plates are first prepared by thorough cleaning in a machine that subjects it to a series of chemical baths and washes. An extremely thin adhesive layer is then applied to the glass plate. The excess is spun off and a layer of photosensitive material, much like film emulsion, is then spin coated onto the glass. The glass plate, now with its fine layer of photoresist, is then baked. And afterwards, a laser is used to check for uniformity of the photosensitive layer. Continual inspection like this at every stage of the manufacturing process is an essential part of our quality assurance program at DMI. A combination of human and robotic inspectors are continually engaged in culling out any possible defects or imperfections all along the way. This allows us to determine if anything ever needs to be done over as soon as possible, instead of waiting until the very end of the process. It's an efficient use of resources and is an important part of our quick turnaround capability. When a master is about to be made, the customer's digital source material is retrieved from our limited access vault to be sent on to the laser mastering room, where it will be recorded onto the glass plate. It's on these mastering machines that data from the digital tape will be fed to the lasers to create the microscopic pits and lands. The glass is placed on the mastering table, where it is slowly positioned to spin under the laser beam. Beneath the metal cover of the machine, the laser travels through precision optics and is focused onto the spinning glass. The data on the customer's tape modulates the laser, turning it on and off nearly two million times per second, exposing the photosensitive material wherever the laser shines. The exposed glass is then removed to be developed like a film, only in this case, the exposed parts are washed away, leaving the microscopic pits that now represent the information. The next stage in the manufacturing process requires that an extremely thin layer of silver be applied to the glass plate. To accomplish this, the glass is placed in a vacuum chamber. 
a small amount of silver placed on a heating element, and the chamber is sealed. Air is then pumped from the chamber until a vacuum approaching that of interplanetary space is created. An electric current heats the silver until it boils in the vacuum and coats the glass with a fine layer of electrically conductive pure silver. Making a glass master is one thing, but producing thousands of copies of a CD requires a few more steps. The pits inscribed into the original glass disc must now be precisely transferred through a series of generations to a master mold from which the actual discs played in your disc player are formed. This master mold is called a stamper. To get to that stage, the glass disc is coated with a metallic layer. When this layer is separated from the glass disc, it contains an exact mirror image of the pits in the glass. Everything that was a pit is now a hill. This father, as it's called, is then coated with a metallic layer. When that layer is separated, it yields what's now called a mother, another disc that has the identical pattern of pits and lands as the original glass plate. This same process of coating and removal is repeated on the mother to make the metal stamper. It's from this stamper the compact disc actually packaged and sold is formed. Thousands of discs can be produced from each stamper. And if a stamper wears out, or if additional ones are needed, it may be formed from the mother. If a disc's popularity demands it, a father can be used to grow another mother to make more stampers and make more CDs. This family tree of generations is literally grown in a process called electroforming. It all takes place here in a series of chemical baths. The silver-coated glass plate is placed on a rotating back plate and submerged in a nickel solution. When an electric current is applied to the solution, the nickel is deposited on the silver of the glass plate. The process takes over two hours. Afterwards, the nickel layer is peeled away from the glass. This same electrochemical process is used again to create all the generations needed for mass production. The final product of electroforming is the metal stamper. The stamper is then carefully cut to fit in the molding machines. To make the discs themselves, the stamper is placed in the mold cavity of the molding machines. Clear plastic polycarbonate is then heated and injected into the mold cavity. When the mold is cooled and the polycarbonate solidified, the plastic disc is removed. An aluminum reflective layer is then metallized on the disc. This metal layer acts as a mirror, reflecting the laser in the CD player. The metal layer must be protected, so a layer of protective lacquer is then spin-coated on the disc. The lacquer is quickly cured and hardened by ultraviolet light. The discs are then ready for labeling on highly sophisticated screen printing machines. Up to five colors can be printed on each disc. After each color ink is screened onto the disc, it is dried and cured in ultraviolet light. The automatic inspection system checks constantly for color correctness on the label side making sure the colors remain consistent throughout the entire run and assuring the correct label is being applied to the correct disc. The system simultaneously also checks the other side of the disc for any scratches or imperfections. Our computer graphic division uses computers to create the images that will appear on the discs from customer artwork and our Huntsville facility was the first plant in the United States to provide offset printing. Even though printing on discs is very different from printing on paper, the ink department works to find the closest possible match to PMS colors for our CDs and do it consistently from batch to batch. After the discs are labeled and receive their final inspections, they're ready for packaging. A myriad of packaging options are available, ranging from the common jewel box to sophisticated custom designs. Our individualized customer service, our commitment to quality throughout the production process, 
our capacity to meet any schedule, and our competitive prices, make DMI the best choice for all types of compact disc manufacturing, today or in the future. Though disc technology is constantly evolving, DMI's vision of customer satisfaction remains the focus of everything we do.